Is the Apple Watch Ultra a Garmin killer? Let's find out. <laughs> well, I didn't want to make that video, but uh, well, it seems that a lot of people want to know what I think about it, so here's the video. I didn't want to make it because I didn't test it. I didn't have it in my hand. I didn't play with it. I didn't do sports with it. So I think it's a bit awkward to do a review about it. But well, let me tell you what I think about it from what I can see on the Apple website. If you want to skip straight to where I start, start to talk about it, well, you can skip to that from the timeline just right there. And otherwise, I just want to tell you who I am before. I am an adventurer. I have a YouTube channel where I do adventure video, uh, where, where I help people to uh, start uh, seeing the world, uh, uh, do, do adventure on their own. Uh, and well, I love watches. Uh, especially GPS watches, sport watches. Uh, and I have a channel where I test, well, it's actually this very channel, where I test those watches and I've sold a lot of them. So I, I did test more than those. Uh, but <laughs> I also do tutorials on those and I do a lot of things around watches. So it's, it's a bit natural that people ask me what I think about that Apple uh, Garmin Killer Apple Watch. Um, uh, some people think I am a Garmin guy. Well, I love their watches, but if a new company do something better, well, I will jump on it. I will be happy to find something better. But actually, I can say that the bar is very, very high uh, at Garmin. They have wonderful product, but well, if someone do something better, I'll be happy to use it. So. <laughs> Let's jump on that page. And just before we begin, I think Carmen, Caros, Sunto, Poller, uh, those four companies that do uh, sport watches, do sport watches, adventure watches. Uh, actually, my, actually, the one I have on my wrist is a Garmin uh, Tactics 7. Uh, it's the same thing as the one you probably know, the Phoenix 7, just a military option. It's the very same thing with some military option that I don't care about. I just use that one because I think it looks better. Uh, there's also the Enduro. Those three watches, or, or there's also the Epix. Uh, those four watches are in my head. Sport watch slash uh, navigation tool that are also a bit of uh, a smartwatch. Apple do smartwatch, but I, I say it, but I never use an Apple watch. It's just by looking at it, it looks like a smartwatch that have sport features. And I think from what I have seen yet of the, of the Apple, <laughs> Apple Watch Ultra that well, it's a bit of the same thing in the most robust case, I think. Okay, so let's take a look at that Apple page. So introdu introducing a watch that pushes boundaries for athletes that do the same. Apple Watch Ultra adventures awaits. Meet the most rugged and capable Apple Watch ever with a robust titanium case. That's great. Precision dual frequency GPS. That's great, uh, but but uh, they're not the uh, the only one that make it. Uh, Kuros, I think, made the first dual frequency watches, and uh, Garmin just started to do it a little bit after it with the the new Phoenix and Tactics and Epics and and Enduro series. Uh, they all do that. Uh, I have the option but I don't use it because it drains a bit more battery. And when I tested it, I didn't see any difference. Uh, probably that if you are doing, doing some sport into big cities with big skyscrapers, or if you are hiking, not, not hiking, but um, if you are climbing 
rock walls, those kind of things. This is a technology that uh, you will probably enjoy. But for me, biking, hiking, uh, swimming, uh, swimming indoor, uh, <laughs> well, I have no use of it, so I, I just not use it. Uh, actually, there's a, there, there, uh, Garmin just released a new feature that let me enable it automatically. So the watch will turn to that feature automatically if it needs to. Otherwise, well, I don't see the needs of it. Uh, okay. Uh, mm -mm -mm. Up to 36 hours of battery life. Ouch. This, this for me is terrible. Actually, my Garmin Tactics, <laughs> Uh, but but they, they don't say much about it. Uh, well, there's the point number one. We can see at the very bottom, the point number one, what they say about it. Holiday battery is based on the following use. 180, 180 time checks, one, 180 notification, 90 minutes of apps use, and 60 minutes workout with music playback from Apple Watch via Bluetooth over a course of 36 hours. Um, Apple Watch Ultra GPS plus cellular usage includes a total of 8 hours of LTE connection and 28 hours of connection via iPhone via Bluetooth over a course of 36 hours. Uh, they don't say how much time of GPS into it, but it seems that it's not all of that time. It seems that. And if I see uh, 180 time checks, that means that the screen is not always on, on the 36 hours. So that's a huge down point for me. 36 hours might seem a lot for someone that used an Apple Watch since forever, but it's very, very low for a Garmin user like me. Uh, actually, so that's what I said. I have 77% left of battery, and that's 22 days of uh, in that state. I mean, I'm not in GPS state, but just in that state, showing me my hearth rate, uh, sleeping track, uh, times, elevation, and all those things. Um, well, I have 22 days of battery left, and it's even bigger with uh, the Android 2, I think it pushed it up to 32 days, a month, a month of battery. Uh, but if I start an activity with my 77% of battery, I will actually have 48 hours of GPS time. And that's on auto mode. That could be a push a bit uh, further if I just use the GPS mode, but I'm actually testing it because it's a new feature. Uh, I think it would be more fair to compare it with the uh, Apex 2 because it have the same type of screen. Actually, six days of battery with the 89% uh, of uh, battery, and that's in always mode. All, the screen is always on. And if I start an activity, well, this one will give me actually 21 hours of battery in GPS mode before it dies, and that's in always on display. It could push it a bit further uh, if I put it not in always on display and that's not even with a full battery. <laughs> so yeah, 36 hours is very low for me. Uh, I mean, that watch will sleep your, your, will track your sleep, but you will probably set it on charge at night. So you it won't track your sleep because you will, you will need to recharge it very often. The freedom of cellular. That's great, that's, that's great. And I think they do a lot more uh, on cellular that Garmin does. Actually, the Phoenix families doesn't have it. Uh, I think they only have it with the Forerunner 955 and uh, 65 LTE mode. Uh, and I think it's only, well, for the, for the one I tested, did I sell it? Yes, I sold it. The, 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 the Forerunner 955 was only able to send your actual location and was able to uh, make a call if something bad happened. 
and receive message from the people that send you message on the Garmin website. So that was very limited. Um, well, actually, if I could leave, leave without my phone and still having the possibility to make call, receive and make call, listen to my music, probably that I will, I would not, I would leave without my phone. Uh, well, actually I can have music on my Garmin watch, but I don't use it because it drained the battery. So I don't know. Uh, and three special, and three specialized bands made for athletes and adventurers of all kinds. Actually, I think I like the, the one they call the Alpine, I think, whatever, I think uh, that the one we see just right there. I think it looks good. Um, well, design, pioneering, engineering. Okay, looks tough. Look, looks tough because it is. I don't think it's looked tough, but that's just me. Maybe I don't think it's looked tough. I, I, it doesn't mean it, it's not, but I don't think it looks rugged. Uh, to build the ultimate sport watch, we craft every element with pain, painstaking attention to detail for un, unparalleled performance. Titanium strikes the perfect balance between weight, titanium is very good, ruggedness and corrosion resistance. The new case design rises up to surround the flat sapphire crystals, that's very great, and protect it from uh, edge impact. The digital crown is larger and side button is raised from the case, making them easier to use while you're wearing gloves. Okay, about that. Um, the crown. Uh, that's something I tested with Kuros, and I didn't like it. Uh, okay, even with my, <laughs> even with my uh, Garmin watch in winter, if it's not that cold, I will remove my glove to use the watch because, well, it's always better with just your finger. But if it's very cold, I have absolutely no trouble to. To use that watch because it got five buttons. That's one thing that scary me a lot about the Apple Watch. The Apple Watch is designed to be used with a touchscreen, and I don't think touchscreen is a good idea for a sport watch. Actually, they add it on the Garmin Phoenix, uh, on the Garmin Phoenix Seven series, uh, the touchscreen. Um, but it's an option. You don't have to use it. I think it was fun when I used it into the first weeks, um, but I did stop using it uh, just because when I take my shower, well, there is water dropping on it. It activates the screen and it starts doing some weird things. Uh, so I just disable it and actually it's not enabled. <laughs> I disable it. I probably enable it at some point last week and I just disabled it uh, in the evening while taking my shower and just not re-enable it. I think buttons works just fine. Uh, I think it's, the, I think buttons is the best for a sport watch. Actually, this one is the proof because I can almost fully use it with the, the tactile screen, but I disable it because I I prefer to go with the buttons. I have the option and I don't use it. I disable it even. Uh, I think when I go swimming, if I jump into the water and then want to start my activity, do I, on the Apple Watch, will I be able to start with the button or will I have to use the touch screen to start it and it will be a nightmare because my screen will be wet, my finger will be wet. Uh, will I have trouble while doing cycling and it's raining, raining on the watch? Will I worry? To, will I worry that it will stop my activity or do something wrong? Uh, or will I just sweat on it? Because that happened when I do cycling. I sweat a lot, uh, running or whatever. If the screen get wet, will it be terrible? It have to get an option to be. Uh, just buttons and well <laughs> I don't think it will with just the crown and 
from my experience and that's not an apple watch that's a coros watch the crown with gloves is terrible terrible but i didn't test it 49 minute mil millimeter titanium case sorry water resistance 100 meter that's great uh that means it's probably a 10 adm uh, 10 ADM would mean that, well, yes, go up to 100 meters deep, uh, but also that you can do jet ski, all of those kind of sport watch, uh, sport, water sport very fast. You can uh, uh, jump into water, uh, dive, whatever. Uh, it's fine. Test it to mil STD8, I don't know what that means. IP6X dust resistance. I don't know what with what to compare that with uh the biggest and brightest apple watch display ever direct sunlight is no obstacle for an always on retina display that's an eye-opening 2000 nits that's a lot actually i think that the garmin epix is 1000 nits uh and i never had trouble to read it it's always uh perfect to read so double of it well that's great um, I would rather have uh, a <laughs> longer display time than the double of something that I think is actually perfect as a screen on, on the Epix. Um, mm, 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 and a bigger display provide more room for workout metrics and details back watch faces. Uh, way finer watch face with night mode. Uh, especially for Apple Watch Ultra, the Wayfinder face feature a time dial that can be switched to live compass and has room for eighth complication. In low light situation, you can rotate the digital crown to activate night mode and see the watch face turn a vivid red. Actually, I think the, that watch face looks very good. Um, there's a lot of information on it. Uh, I can see actually that probably that the sun will, will rise at 6.46 a.m. and that will be an eight hour and 37 minutes. That probably the last activity was a 3.7 kilometers my bike. Or is it the distance to my bike, maybe? Uh, latitude, longitude. Some kind of data. If you can put a lot of data on the watch face, that's good, but we don't know. Ready for action. The new action button gives you quick physical control over a variety of functions. It is customizable and can do things like control a workout, mark a compass, waypoint, or begin a dive. Begin a dive. Uh, okay, just like you, it's full of potential. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> So you can program it to do something. Can it do more than one function? Probably you can start an activity with it, but I don't know. I don't know what to think about that. Uh, everything in its place, an essential versatile tool that fits on your wrist. Apple Watch Ultra packs incredibly, incredible capacity into a surprisingly small space. Okay, GPS antenna, we already talked about that. Action button and uh, uh -huh, dual speaker. Uh, side button, depth gauge, three way uh, battery life for days. When you're on the second day of a backpacking trip, the final leg of a triathlon, or diving along the coral reef, the last thing you want to think about is running out of battery. With longer battery life than ever, you can take on almost anything and have energy to spare um in 36 hours it's not days it's a day and a half and up to 60 hours on low power settings so let's see what is low power settings number six Multi-day adventure battery life is based on the following use while low power mode and with workout settings enabled for fewer hearth rates and GPS reading. Yuck. 
<laughs> when you do those kind of big activity, the last thing you want to have is less GPS reading and fewer heart rate. Uh, so if I think of a triathlon runner or some something huge, if you got less GPS uh, reading, this means instead of getting a new position every second, you get one at probably every 30 seconds or every minute, uh, it won't be able to tell you at what speed you are going because it take the speed from a point to another. And if, it, if you only got one every minute, or 30 seconds, or we don't know because they don't say it. Uh, well, you lose that ability. No, uh, no, uh, no actual uh, real time speed. You could have an average, but even there, uh, if you are turning into a mountain like that, you will skip some part of the trail. So even the distance at the end will not be real. Uh, I don't like it. Uh, 15 hours of workout over 600 times checks, 35 minutes of app use, three minutes of talk and 15 hours of sleep track over the course of 60 hours. Apple Watch will trouble usage on YouTube, blah, 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 blah. Uh, uh, five hours connection of to the audio. Whatever, eh, eh, I don't like it. <laughs> So, well, battery life for days. When you are on the second days of a backpacking trip, the final leg of a triathlon or diving along the coral reef, the last thing you want to think about is running out of battery. Actually, with my watch, when it says that it remain uh, three days of battery, I think it's very time for me to recharge it. So, starting with half of it, <gasps> Hike, run, dive, these, there's a band for that. Okay, yeah, 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 that, that's the Alpine, Alpine loop I was talking about earlier. I think it looks great. Uh, is there something else interesting to see? Uh, GPS, we already talked about it. That's fine, yeah, as you can see in the, to the streets. I doubt that this was an actual track. Mm. Compass reimagine. Mm -hmm. Now this worried me a bit. I didn't see any picture of a map on the screen. And I doubt that if there is a map <laughs> Probably that the only one that will be available will be the uh, Apple map that I hate. Uh, actually, that's a breadcrumb that we see right here. I really love to have the map and the navigation system on my watch. If it's not available, it's terrible for me. Uh, while I just think about it, there's something I didn't see and it's a flashlight. That looks like a gadget, but trust me when you got one on your watch, you don't want to get another watch after that. Uh, action button, yeah. Minus 20 Celsius to 55 Celsius, that's great. Uh, I don't know anything about uh, diving, so I won't talk about that. Um, temperature sensor, cool. Uh, don't think it's something I have on my watch. Um, don't think it's something I have on my watch. Sleep tracking. Again, when will it sleep track if I need to recharge it almost every night? Uh, they did a lot of thing about safety, so car crash Detection, fall detection, or emergency SOS. Great. Uh, not a selling point, but great. I mean, for me. Uh, stay connected with cellular. That's awesome. Oh, stream your favorite music podcasts. 
that could be great. Actually, I don't use the podcast on my watch because it drains the battery and I think it's not well implemented. Uh, I use, can use Spotify for that, but I don't think it's very well made. Um, no. Okay, but music, let's see point 14. Apple Music required subscription. Okay. Uh, not what I wanted to see. Oh, maps, maps, get direction, direction, and even a tap on the wrist when you need to turn. Good. But is it only Apple Watch, Apple Maps? Because if I can't have something more details that have every trails and all of those things, um, I know something that will point restaurant, hospital, uh, bench, uh, toilet, uh, uh, antenna on top of a mountain, those kind of things. Ooh. Ooh. We don't know. <laughs> it's an Apple selling page, so it's full of beautiful text and not much of information. Um, and it's uh, 1,100 uh, Canadian dollar. Uh, actually, it's it's a bargain. Uh, if you compare with uh, well, well, with my tactics, I think this one is uh, somewhere around seventeen hundred dollars. It's very more expensive. The Phoenix is also more expensive. If you pick the the seven X Sapphire Solar, oh, I've got Solar uh, Recharge also with Garmin. Uh, yeah, so I think it, that makes the tour. Uh, maybe I said something wrong, but again, I didn't have it on my hands, so I didn't test it. That's just from that page. So, what are my final thoughts? I think that... I think that they might come... F take a part of the Garmin market, but they will most likely take it from the Garmin market that was interested into um, that was interested into the watch like the venue. The venue is most likely a smart watch with sport features. I think people that are looking for navigation tool and sport watch, well, it's not there at all. Uh, mainly because of the battery uh, the battery time. Uh, and then, because of the tactile screen, I don't think sport people that are doing sport well, want to use a tactile screen. I don't want to start an activity with the touch screen. I want to start it with the button. So yeah, I will probably test it when it will be released. But there's nothing appealing to me in that Apple Watch. Oh, and. <laughs> I use Mac, but I have an Android phone. Will I be limited because I have an Android phone? Do I need uh, an iPhone to get the most of my Apple Watch? Do I? I don't know. Um, I don't know. Oh, and if I think about that, I've heard that maybe I'm wrong, but actually when I receive text message, on my Android phone, I do get that text message on the screen of my Garmin watch. But I've heard that people that have an iPhone can only know that they have received a text message, but they don't know who's, who's it from and what's the content of it. Uh, it's a security feature from Apple that prevent Garmin from reading uh, the information. So, on that basis, uh, because Apple is in its own world, uh, with with its own features, with own, with its own gadget, and all that Apple world, uh, will I be able to, for example, use an Apple Watch for with my tax when I do stationary bike uh, in the winter inside? Uh, will it be compatible with all 
the gadgets that are released yet. I uh, think of Garmin with the uh, things for golf, for uh, dog tracking, for uh, the tail light on your bike, uh, your uh, pedometer that you can put, I don't use that, but you can put some stuff at, at your foot and uh, a HR uh, band and all those things. Uh, no, seriously, I don't think Apple is, is in that market yet. And the way they attack it, I think it proves that it's not nearly there. I don't think they, I think they built, probably that they should have called that the uh, Apple Watch Pro. <laughs> not, 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 not Ultra Force ports. I don't think it's nearly there yet. I think it's a total other market. And if Apple wanted to attack that market, they should have uh, rebuilt a new Apple Watch from scratch with a different menu, a different interface, uh, buttons, longer battery life, different kind of screen to get that uh, longer battery life. No, no, I don't think it's there yet. So, yeah. I didn't want to make that video, but I did it for you. So I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> hey, take care of yourself. See ya.